Your time now is 649 and August is Valley Fever Awareness Month. Joining us this morning, Valley Fever Institute Director Dr. Royce Johnson to talk about the latest about the disease and what you and your family need to know to protect yourselves. Dr. Johnson, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. So why are some health officials sounding the alarm now particularly <clears throat> about Valley Fever? Well, if one, the Valley Fever um, Awareness Month is always in August, so we always take this opportunity to bring up uh, a disease that has substantial local impact. Mm -hmm. This is also the upslope of the cases because they don't occur equally all through the year. So the um, summer and especially the late summer and fall are the highest incidence times for people to get Valley Fever. Are there days specifically where you are most at risk? Well, th there's at least the mythology that windy days are more risky, and that makes a certain amount of sense. I think mm -hmm. it's probably true. There isn't a heck of a lot you can do about it other than not breathe. Which is, <laughs> Don't go outside as much those days, yeah, perhaps? Yeah, I do recommend uh, that, you know, if it's a particularly windy day, maybe the kids should do something indoors instead okay. of outdoors. Did our, our, our big rain amounts this year, is that going to have an impact on valley fever contagion? Well, we certainly think so. The argument is exactly when. So we could see an up spike this fall. On the other hand, the up spike could be next year. Mm. Um, I actually favor the second choice more than the first okay. choice, but the numbers will tell us at the end of the year. At, at the moment, we're about the same as we were last year. The, at Kern Medical, uh, we actually have seen a bit more in terms of activity, but countywide, it appears to be roughly the same. Okay. And numbers in California more than triple between 2014 and 2021. Why is that? <clears throat> well, one, I think there's more disease. And the other is we changed how we count. <laughs> so we changed the counting of cases to look the same as Arizona. So uh, we had a more strict case definition before 2014. Okay, so tell us a little bit about how to identify this in yourself, because the symptoms seem like they would kind of um, fall into line with a lot of other uh, viruses that go around. That's absolutely true. The biggest difference, so cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, fever, body ache, those are, can be COVID, they can be influenza, they can be respiratory syncytial virus. Those illnesses tend to be shorter. Okay. So if you have those symptoms and they last two weeks, it's probably not community acquired pneumonia and probably not hmm. a viral infection. Okay. Although that there's certainly overlap. It's not easy to tell. But if you've, if you've been sick for two weeks, you should definitely be tested for valley fever. Okay. You should have a chest x-ray and a blood test. Okay. Um, and then uh, the disease can spread outside of the lung. I mean, that's just the main place it shows mm -hmm. up. And it can go to your brain or your big toe or in anywhere else in between. Wow. And so spine pain that lasts longer than two weeks could be a uh, bone infection in your back. Wow. So this is something basically you need to really be your own advocate, push for a test if you have something that's troubling you. I, I've seen multiple patients that actually beat their doctor in terms of making the diagnosis uh, or suspecting the diagnosis at least. Of course, they're going to be wrong too, but of course. and we hope they are because we right. don't want people to have this disease. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Royce Johnson, thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for having us.